Hey there, Jason here again with the Nighthawk 280 Pro again. And today I'm going to get started on Flashing BL Heli, the latest uh, 14.2, I believe. We'll double check later, 14 something or other. But we're going to flash real BL Heli onto the ESCs on this all in one board because the doctored up funky version that. Uh, Emacs puts on there, I'm not a fan of, and a lot of people aren't either. So first thing we're going to do, props off, because, you know, we're going to be messing with uh, ESCs and testing things, and you never want to have your props on when you're testing, because you don't want to, you know, you're not going to lose a finger with these, but trust me, it doesn't feel good when you get hit by them. So... We're going to just go ahead and get these four guys off. I never remember these silly backwards. I'm not a fan of clockwise, counterclockwise mixed motors. I, uh, I like just the standard motors, personally. Having two of them go one way, two go the other, just give me lock nuts. I, I'd much rather just have my locks. But that's me. So get these off. And then we'll get into this. And you'll notice, of course, as I've covered before in a lot of my posts, but not my videos, I've modified my, my Nighthawk quite a bit here. Uh, I took off the light bar to save weight, because I don't really need it where and how I fly. And I took off the transmitter that came with it because I felt it was too exposed and it doesn't work with my boss cam receiver. So I just put on this Eosheen super cheap. It was one of those deals where you get the the whole thing ready to go for 20 bucks or 30 bucks or whatever it is. And unfortunately in my last crash I pulled the wire loose again, but that's no big deal. I'll pop that on before I'm ready to fly again. So first thing we have to do is we have to get our board out. It takes a 5.5, uh, oh, I doubt that's readable, 5.5 millimeter socket. And unfortunately, my 5.5 millimeter socket has seen better days. And this is the only 5.5 I have. So I'll get as many of these loose and off as I can, but I'm probably going to have to do something really ugly here. Yeah. I'm going to have to misuse tools in a way that I do not recommend using, well, misusing tools um, to get some of these off, just because I really need to pick up a better 55 millimeter socket. But it's pretty easy to get into this board on this thing. It's just six nuts. The uh, screws there, one of the nice things is that these spacers inside of here are threaded so when this board comes off your arms are going to stay in place which is kind of handy makes it a little easier to do this kind of surgery and uh, messing with stuff so yeah this one here isn't coming so do not do this get a proper 5.5 millimeter socket don't do it the way I'm doing it and as soon as I get that loose I can go back to using the socket but I promise I'll pick up a proper socket soon so I Quit setting a bad example. And we just have four more screw nuts to undo. That one's not going to come. Maybe there's that one. Or that one. Or that one. Once again, don't do it this way. This is not at all the right tool for the job. Not the right way to do it. back. Come back. All is forgiven. No, well, not necessarily all, but most. And with these six nuts off, we'll be able to pull this board off. It's a bit of a tight fit. 
the XT60 connector is a snug fit and just the six bolts is a, is a tight fit. But with a little bit of gentle wiggling, you're going back and forth, lift in here, lift in here, lift in here, lift in there, it will come up. And once it's off of there, you just have to disconnect the motors. Nice and easy since they're plugs. These are a JST XH, I believe. They're the same plugs used as uh, 2S balance plugs for battery packs. So they're easy to find if you want to go swap into different motors or uh, if you break one and need to replace it or anything. There we go. And we'll disconnect my receiver connection and there's our board. Ooh, it's seen better days. Look at all that dirt. Uh, so there we are, opened up. As you can see, everything stays on there. These don't fall off. So it's really easy to get this guy apart to work on. That's one of the nice things about the all-in-one board. So we'll pop the quad up there for now. And first thing I'm going to do is hit this with a blast of compressed air because it is filthy. And the compressed air really isn't making that big of a difference. <laughs> yeah. The coating is holding on to it pretty good there. Um, I can't really get my light on here too well and get this zoomed in well, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. But, what we're going to do is we're going to solder some connectors onto these four little pads here, onto these four little pads here, these four right across here, and these four right here. Now my initial thought is that I was going to make a six pin header and wire just the one data line from each ESC, share all the clock lines, share the power, share the ground. So I'd have a nice six pin uh, programming header. Unfortunately, I'm out of six, six pin headers. Um, I mean, I have plenty of pins to do a pin header. I got them just laying everywhere, but I don't really want to do that. I want to do a socket, and I'm out of six pin sockets. So I'm going to steal the method that Marco67 on RC groups used, and he's, as far as I know, the first person to successfully, or unsuccessfully, but he was successful, flash uh, proper BL Heli onto this board. And what he did was he just took some uh, extension leads and he soldered them in and left them basically attached in there like that with the wires coming around so that he has a separate programming port for each of the four ESCs. Um, I'm lazy enough, I don't much care for that method, but I want to get this done. So we're going to go go ahead and do it that way. I can always redo it again later the way I'd rather do it. Now, one thing here, I'm going to come over here with a magnifier and take a close look, but I'm 99% sure that the conformal coating goes over, yep, goes over the pads we're interested in. Now, you might be able to get away with just soldering right through that stuff, but I'd rather not risk it. And what I found is that this uh, coating will come off with alcohol. So I'm just going to dip a Q-tip in a little 91 isopropyl, and I'm just going to gently dab it right over the bits of the board that I'm interested in, which are my four programming headers, which will soften up the coating, hopefully enough, it'll be a little easier to solder through there. Now, after that first dab has a moment to soften, I'm just going to come in here, freshen it up a bit, and then go over it with the dry end. Just to get as much of that goop off as I can. Now all four of these lines of these pa programming pads, there's four 
lines on them. There's a signal, a clock, a ground, and power. And they're all laid out pretty much following a pattern with ground on the outside. And I have to double check what the rest of it is. So uh, give me just a moment and I will be right back once I have double checked. Okay, I'm back. Uh, yeah, it's ground, 3.3 volt clock data coming from the outside in on all of these. So on this one, we're looking at ground, 3.3 volt clock data. On this one, we're looking at ground, 3.3 volt clock data. On this one, it's ground, 3.3 volt clock data. And on this one down here, it's ground, 3.3 volt clock data. Now, we don't need to worry about the 3.3 volt because we're going to power this off of all four at once when we do the programming. And we do need the clock data and uh, ground. So I'm going to basically plan on this going right here. And I'm going to figure orange, brown will be our ground, orange will be our uh, data, red will be our clock is how I'm going to do it. Just seems to make sense to me. I'm going to go get the glue gun so I can zap these in here with a little bit of hot glue to hold them. Okay, glue gun's heating up, so we're just going to kind of dry fit all of these. This one's going to come right in here. And we're going to come across right about there. I'm just going to mark it with my fingernail. And grab a knife. Yeah, I'm cutting it just a hair long. Now hang on to these, because we're going to make a flashing harness from them. That will plug into these four connections, and then plug into the Arduino I'm going to use as my programmer. So we can program all of these at once. Now I've got my soldering iron heated up already. And we're going to trim these wires. I'll trim the insulation on the wires. I probably should have used smaller cables, but this is what I happen to have on hand. So we will make do with what we have on hand. Oh, there we go, that one's loose now. I want to keep them together to keep it cleaner, but not the end of the world. Okay. Grab my helping hands. And I'm going to just get a little bit of water on my iron sponge. Here we go. Probably can't see what I'm doing with the iron off camera here, but I'm just going to clean my tip a little bit. 
And grab a bit of solder and tin these three wires. Tin my tip first. It hasn't been used in a couple days. And we will just heat this wire. A little bit of solder. It's going to be pretty tricky soldering doing this. If you're just starting out on this kind of thing, I probably wouldn't suggest tackling this as your first project. You're really dealing with some small little intricate soldering. I'm actually, this is going to make the video a little harder to follow, but I'm going to have to get this up here. And I may still think of myself as pretty young, but... I'm reaching the point where it definitely helps to have a bit of magnification on something this size. So let's see here. How well do I get to these pads? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Yeah, I definitely didn't get all of that coating. I can smell it. Probably not the healthiest thing to inhale. Should have a fume extractor going probably, but I'm just going to put a little bit of fresh solder on the three pads I'm going to do. And then yeah, I'm going to shorten these up just a hair because there's, there's stuff in there I don't want to get accidentally connected to. So I'll take a bit off of here, a bit off of here, a bit off of that one. And it's really just a matter of melting the solder on the pad and the solder on the wire together. This one's going to be a little trickier, so I am going to grab a pair of tweezers. It should be here. Yeah. These are so helpful when doing this little stuff. They're really fine tip tweezers. I got them in a Teach Yourself How to Solder uh, Surface Mount Components kit probably close to 20 years ago at this point. And they, are, they are one of my favorite tools for fine work. There's that. And there's our ground. Alright. See, the one thing I did do is I pinched that wire just a bit. I'm not big on that. Wish I hadn't done that. But I can live with it. And that's just barely long enough. I didn't plan on those wires have to fold over, but that ended up being the best way to get them in there. Let's see if the hot glue is hot yet. Yeah, we got some hot glue going here. Put just a little bit on here. I don't want to use too much because this is going right over the fats. ESCs. So they're going to get hot. <laughs> so this will work itself loose over time, I'm sure. But there we go. That right there would be our first programming port added in. And that should be totally usable. Let me go ahead and uh, snap a photo so when I post this in the forms it'll be more visible. Easier to share and follow along hopefully. We will just get right in here. Doo -doo. All right. 
And now we'll move on to the next one. Next one we'll do will be right here. And I'm going to try and be consistent here. So I've got my data line on the inside, ground on the outside, or at least what I'm calling inside and outside. So I want this one to be the same way. And this one there isn't going to be any good way to come with those. There's nasty stuff to watch out for in all directions. I think doing the same basic flop over trick with the wires is going to be a little easier. So once again, we're going to do the same thing here. Strip it tin, tin our pads. Hmm. Now I always cut my wires just a hair long and then trim them to length. It's just a little easier that way. Some people are good enough they can cut them right to size and do everything just right, but I'm not. I know my limitations and I work with them. It's easier to not fight. So once again, we, uh, I like to twist them to keep them clean. No loose wires. And in the helping hands, grab the soldering iron. Tin my tip. Lobby on there, get them off. And once again, we will just heat the wire. Remember when you're soldering, you always want to heat the work, not the solder. So if you're tinning a wire like this, you want to heat the so heat the wire until the wire is hot enough that it will heat the solder and just suck that solder right in there. You don't want to just melt the solder and drop it on. There we go. Now, I'll bring this back in, come back up here, and I'm just going to need my tip again. Clean tip makes this so much easier. And I will real quickly just touch up the tinning on these pads. Now, it might actually be better to just go ahead and melt through that uh, coating instead of doing what I did and trying to clean it off first because that might give a little added protection on some of these things that you don't really want to get into. Man, this one, that ground, that is going to be real tricky to solder on clean. There, there are three capacitors right next to that guy, none of which I'm pretty sure I want to connect to by mistake. So I could grab a ground off of somewhere else, which might be my best bet. I'm not sure where my best place to do that would be. Hmm. I'm going to go steal a quick peek at Marco's wiring just to see how he did it, because why reinvent the wheel here? I know he took all his grounds off of third-party points. I'm not big on that. But... Yeah, that's what I thought. He avoided that. And he came in, and he grabbed his ground right off of here. And he grabbed it off the USB for this one. But this one was easy enough to get to. I don't mind that one. Take a look at these others while I'm here. That one's a little tricky, but I think it'll be, it'll be doable. That one, these two are the tricky ones. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I already made my wire kind of short here. I don't know if I'll be able to... Do it the way he did or not. Probably I won't. 
let's just go ahead and get my signal wires on and we'll see then what I can do about uh, yeah I gotta trim these a little bit trim 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 there we go real short we don't need much these are little pads we're connecting to This one in from the top. So there's the least stuff in the way doing it that way. And this one. Do about that ground. Well, let's just go for it. Why not? Why not? Tell if that is goo from the uh, coating or if that is a solder bridge. I'm hoping it is not a solder bridge. This is certainly a spot where magnification helps. And I'm definitely thinking this is well worth adding programming headers. Because you can't flash through the signal wire on this board due to the cap and resistor on the on the signal line and without that anytime you reflash or change settings you'd have to try and get all this apart and get in there and it's just going to be a heck of a lot easier having programming headers I'd still rather have one header that does all four at once but we'll get to the workaround I'm going to go with I'm still just trying to determine here if I created a solder bridge between this resistor and the uh, guy next to it. I don't think I did. Weird noises coming in from outside tonight. Yeah, that's just that's just some of that protective goo on there. So let's see, is this gonna be long enough? No, it's not gonna reach to there. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and make this one work. I need a little bit more solder on my tinned wire. I didn't get quite enough on there for this to work well. Somebody's getting a haunted house going out there or something.
effects. That is awful loud. Sounds like there might be somebody watching a movie. That is a tough one to get to. There's and the amount of goo in there. I didn't get it cleaned out nearly as well as I thought I did. enough solder on that wire to too much. Let's try this again here. on. Let's just inspect to make sure we're not bridging anything. Man, that is close. But I blow up my board, we'll know I wasn't, right? Yeah. Let's not blow up my board today, please. So on this next one, I'm going to be smart, and I'm going to do it the way Marco did. Rather than try and be smart and do it my way. I'm going to steal my ground for this one. Rather than taking ground off of here, I'm going to take ground off of over here. Also gives me a chance to clean off these boot pins, which I've been wanting to do. So I'm going to need those when I try to flash tau on this. Which will be another interesting adventure. Touch more solder where I'm going to take my ground. And so the two spots we'll be attaching to. This way. And I'm going to cut this one. 
a little longer. These two don't need to be as long, so we'll trim them right about there. So it's not the most exciting thing in the world here, but I figure I might as well film all four. That way if one of them comes out horrible, we still have three others we can go by. And worst case, I can just edit down to one. Not that I ever really edit. I'm not great at video editing on the best of days, and the computer I have most access to is so slow I can't even watch my videos until I upload them to YouTube, let alone editing is just too painful on that thing. I desperately need of upgrading that computer, but just can't bring myself to do it because the darn thing still works and there's a lot more I'd rather spend money on. Of course it seems like that whole darn thing still works issue might be going away soon. It's uh, starting to act kind of funny. I think my video card might be on its last legs. My fan on the GPU is acting up and It's an old card and an old computer. Mm, this one I'm going to a little bit longer because he's attaching to a slightly bigger spot there. But that definitely sounds like somebody's listening to an outside movie tonight. This is the first night I've been able to work with my door and window open here. I may not live in the southern hemisphere, but it's pretty darn close with our, our seasons, because winter time is outdoor time for us here, because that's when the weather actually gets tolerable. Summer is when we hide inside and everybody gets gloomy and cranky. really messed with when I, when I moved here, because I moved here at the end of May, beginning of June, not this year, but you know, 15 years ago, and I kind of went from winter in Ohio to Arizona's version of winter, so it was kind of a bummer of a first introduction to just go from indoor, in, stuck indoor to stuck indoor. But, we make do. There we go. That's three. Three down. One to go. And this one's going to be pretty easy. No major surprises on this one, other than these wires are going to be super short. Hmm. That's what's going to be tricky on this one. I may regret this, but I'm going to try to get 
try and do the same thing I did on the first three. And use the ground pad right on the programming pad. I'm really not sure if that's made the smartest bet on this one. Okay. Once again, we trim, we twist. We tin, trim, twist, tin. This would have been easier with smaller wires. I really thought about using some ultralight uh, extension cables I had, but I kind of hated to get tear them up for this because I have a lot more in this size. So I, I'd really rather use this size than give up the few of the ultralights that I have. Okay. So the hard part's almost done here. I'll just get in here and tin these pads. And that coating really smells nasty when it melts. See if we can do this. This one I'm going to do kind of backwards from how I did the others. I'm going to do the ground wire first. Just because coming at it this way, it's going to be easier to do that. Oh, I want that wire just a hair shorter still. Good way to dull your blade there, cutting on a nice hard surface. One mistake I made is I did get a bit more solder than I meant to on these wires as I was tinning them, which makes them just a little stiffer. It a little bit got up there under the insulation, which is never a great thing. And it makes it a little harder to work with. But there we go. We have four programming ports in place. That should be ready to flash. So all we'll have to do is one at a time we'll plug this in, 
flash, one at a time, flash. But eventually what I'll want to do is I'll take all four at once, and I'll make a harness where I can just plug in all four. and have them all come together and we'll tie together all those ground wires we'll tie together the one that gets tied together and we'll just have six wires come out of there that'll plug into my Arduino and we'll be able to do all uh, all four ESC's at one go so next step here I should power this up just to make sure everything is uh, going to be good to go. It would be a smart idea before I go any further. Not that I'm big on smart ideas. Uh, I really should do it with a current limiter though. So. Who wants to learn how to make a current limiter? Uh, basically, all you need is a light bulb. And uh, which wires come together here? Yeah, these two or these two. And we'll. Uh, just wire that off as some XT60s so we can run it in line and that will let us uh, power this up and if something is shorted out hopefully that'll help protect us by limiting the current but I'm really tempted to just go ahead and be bad idea here uh, I don't know I don't know bad idea good idea Shall we go for bad idea? We're gonna go for bad idea. Here we go. Hey, you look good. No smoke. And all four ESC still light, so I think we're okay. Um, current limiter would still be a good idea after I flash, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video for now, and I will uh, get prepped for the actual flashing next.